All right, this is a big day, I guess you could say, for me. I'm going to transfer the computer that's in this case here, which I use here in my office and do all my video editing on, into my newly modified wooden computer case that used to be out in my living room. I'm going to start by stripping the stuff out of here and talking a little bit about what's in here. First of all, I'm taking out these, um, what are these called? <laughs> Solid state drives. This one is a old one actually. This is a 64 gigabyte one. I bought a oh, long time ago. And uh, I mainly use that as a scratch disc. When you edit video or even edit pictures, what wears out a hard drive uh, quickly, or is this the old one? Anyway, one of them's the old one, one of them's the old one. What wears out the hard drive quickly is a lot of writing and rewriting. Um, you know, if you've got older hard drives, like I've got a couple of older ones, like this one here in particular, is around six years old, but I only use it for backup, so it's only accessed occasionally. They will last a lot longer. The first thing that I'm trying to get out here are these two graphics cards and they just pop out like that and these are RX 480s I think yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure and these are the problem inside this case because these get pretty darn hot when they're rendering a video so and there's not a whole lot of airflow you can see how close this one was to the power supply here those fans could barely operate. And this one was partially blocked by this smaller card that I've got in here. That extra card I was talking about is the Decklink card. And what that does is it drives my second monitor full screen. So the next thing I want to do is get out the power supply. And luckily, this thing is modular. And all the connectors will unplug like this, which is very convenient because it allows you to only have the number of things in there that you absolutely need to run the stuff that you've got in the computer. I just undid the screws that hold the power supply in and here it is looking a little bit dirty. Um, hopefully the new case will fix that problem because once again I'll be putting this right inside there. Now this is a 750 watt power supply. I bought this mainly because of you know future proofing and it was good quality. I think it was actually on sale when I bought it too and that certainly doesn't hurt. Now a lot of this stuff with the fans and stuff I'm gonna have to bring it out to my shop and blow the dust out. Alright I just want to get these SATA cables unplugged from the motherboard and taken out of here. You can see how limited the space is in here. And then there's one screw on this side holding the Blu-ray drive in. I'm gonna unscrew that and push that ahead so that I can unplug the connectors on the back of that and then take that completely out. So I've got a lot of this stuff tied together here inside the case and some of it was tied together when I bought the case. So. I get this little Velcro on here, which is handy because it's reusable. So these are all front panel control things here. Uh, quite a number of them I'm not going to need because the only thing I have on the outside of the new case is the power switch. So I just got to figure out which one that is. All right, this one in here looks like audio for the front panel. I definitely don't need that. This one over here is for just standard USB, I think. I definitely don't need that. And these ones, this cluster in here, are marked for the power LED and the power switch. And the hard drive LED. This one right here, I don't need that. 
and the I have an LED in the um, switch. The switch is illuminated, but it's 12 volts, and I don't know for sure what the voltage is that's coming out of this. I'll connect it and see what happens. Okay, to make this easier, I just pulled the front panel right off, and I want to see how these are connected. And it looks like they're wired directly into the switch, and then the reset button over here. So I'm going to have to snip those off, I guess. Eight pin thing, and then the bigger one here, and then that harness comes out, and I can set that aside. Now the motherboard itself is a 99 X99 ASLI Plus MSI board, and the processor is a 5820K i7. This arrangement is already a couple years old, but it's still blazingly fast, so there's no reason to upgrade this, at least for the next two or three years, for sure. Unless, you know, the video standard somehow changes <laughs> in that time, which I highly doubt, this will be more than adequate for the next five to ten years, actually, unless something goes wrong. And I'm just taking out the screws that are holding it onto the tray in here. And the good thing about my screwdriver here is that it's slightly magnetic. So it grips onto the screw. Now the board is not powered, but of course, you know, you don't want the screw to be falling down amongst this stuff down here. Okay, I haven't got anything else to talk about other than, you know, get this done but the RAM there's 32 gigabytes of uh, RAM in here as well and I don't see that that will ever be a roadblock either I'm just gonna see if I've missed anything no it's all out so I can take I'm not gonna take the cooler off I'm not gonna take the processor off of course let's pull that right out of there about an hour has passed, and in that time I took the power supply and the motherboard and the graphics cards out to the shop and blew the dust out of them. I also made these brackets right here, which are mainly made from plywood, and I've got washers on the sides here to hold the power supply in place. And uh, I figured that's the easiest way to do this. And then they just screw into the side in place and then I can tighten these screws down and that will hold the power supply in there nicely and not block anything which is also important and as you can see the grill down here the power is right here I'll have the cord coming in through here wrap around and come up through here so it won't block anything and then the fan here will draw air in or push it out I'm not sure way this one works and then all of the connectors are up at the top of the case facing upwards. So that makes it really easy to connect everything. Last night I added the hard drive rack in here. As you can see, it's without the cradle that had it spring loaded. I've just screwed it onto the front panel here. And I did this because I'm not overly concerned about vibrations in this case. Like I said before, uh, noise is not really that much of an issue with this. I also had this little platform up here for the Blu-ray drive and added metal brackets on either side of that to hold the thing on. And I just finished attaching this smaller drive rack here. This is for the solid state drives that slip right in there like that. I've only got space there for three, but I don't ever foresee me needing any more than two actually in here. I have an M2 hard drive on the motherboard itself, which will probably be replaced before either of these do. I've moved on to the tray that the motherboard goes on, and this is the original one I had in there before. Unfortunately, it didn't have enough standoff, so I salvaged some out of the case that I just took apart. But also, in the places where I need more standoffs, there are just holes so to fix that, I've cut short pieces of quarter-inch tubing 
Now this is just stuff that I got with a water filter that I have. But you can get this at any place that sells plumbing supplies, like your big box store. And then I don't have to do this, but it works out being easier. I'm just going to glue these right onto the tray, centered on those holes, with some super glue. Alright, now I got the in-out shield. I'm going to stick that in the back here. Click that in. And then I can get the motherboard put in place. And the places where there are actual standoffs, I can drive in the screws. But in the other places where I put the tubing spacers, I need to use bolts. These are number four, and I think they're around half inch long. And then I'll also put nuts on the bottom. Okay, now that I have the motherboard installed on the tray, before I put it in, I'm going to reattach the harness that powers it. Next thing I can do is get it put inside the case and screw it in place. Okay, after I put the tray in, I wired up this switch and installed that and plugged it into the right connectors. Next thing I need to do is get the hard drives in. I've already put in the solid state drives right here and hooked them up. This one here actually is the system drive, 500 gigabytes. The other one is 64. I've got four mechanical drives to put in, uh, three that are two terabytes and one that is one terabyte. And what these are for is for bulk backup. These last two I have here are out of a network attached server that I bought, but I was not happy with. My idea was to use one of these extenders I just plug in here and then lift that up off the motherboard and plug it into that second slot up there and then still have lots of airflow. So that's what I think I'm going to do, but I do have to make a bracket that somehow goes over here. Okay, I did a lot of messing around and I've come up with a system for mounting this. I've got that first a graphics card in slot number three, which is the second um, big slot, I guess you could say. And then this uh, extension here is plugged into the first slot, and that'll plug into the back of this graphics card right here. And then I put a little block on the side here to screw the card into, and the the end of the clip, the bracket that normally goes down inside the tray, hooks up behind the fan as well, so that's kind of convenient. It gives it an extra little bit of holding power there. And I also want to do this without knocking the whole thing off of this fan that I've got it perched up on, because <laughs> that would be a bad thing. So that goes in there and tightens. And then to hold up the other end of the car, all I've got is a stick here that slides in and then I'm going to glue that in place and I'm going to glue blocks on either side of this right here to keep it from moving side to side. So what this gives me is clear space to the fans in the second card I guess you could say and then clear space to the fans in this card right here. They're all wide open all the way around. Lots of airflow. Well, as you can probably see from the window there, it's starting to get dark out. And uh, I've been at this all day. And this cord will not clear. The, it'll just clear. It looks like it'll just clear the filter. So I don't know if I have one that's slightly different. Or actually, I just pushed it up, so that's the reason why it would clear. Otherwise, it won't clear at all. Oh no! Why do they make these things so long? Uh, that's something I didn't foresee. I may have to move this up about an inch, and that's probably what I'll do. But in the meantime, I've got to get this thing put in here. This was what was in there originally, and what it does is allows the cord to come into the case and still allow the filter to slide past it. So, get that screwed in. And it's 
secures the cord so it can't come out. Okay, I managed to rearrange the plugs on the hard drives down here so that I didn't have to have one. This one up here will reach, I think. And looks like it will. Look at that. And then the SATA cable. Like that, and I'll get a couple screws in this, and that'll be done. Pretty sure that the only thing I have left to do is to plug in the power supply to the two graphics cards. So I've got these here, and I'll do that now. And then I'll be able to try it out and see, see, if, it, see if it works and doesn't blow up. It's always the tensest part of anything like this. Especially when you're doing something like this, say you've made some of the stuff, you don't know if you've got any bits of metal or even loose screws down inside that will short things out. Anyway, I'll report back and let you know if it was a successful start. All right, after a little bit of messing around, I did get it started. I had to unplug all the other drives though. So there's a problem there and I can't get into the BIOS uh, configuration menu here for some stupid reason. Whenever I restart this computer, it stays black until the uh, until Windows starts and then I can see what I'm doing. I, I try pressing delete and I'm pretty sure that's the key that will bring me in there. But anyway, I'll figure it out. The main thing is, yes, it's working. No problem. Um, I'll figure out the rest <laughs> as I go. As for the fans, they are a little bit loud, actually. So I'll have to see how much it bothers me with the, t with the cover on. And it's eventually going to go down in here where the other one was. I just had to hook it up out there to test it. But uh, I don't know. It's a lot louder than it was. But then it will be a lot cooler, too. It's a couple days later, I thought I would uh, pop back in and just wrap this up here. I made a couple more changes since I left off, and that was to... First of all, I had to move the graphics card, the one that's hanging, a little bit so that I could access one of the DisplayPort ports on the back so that I could plug the cable in and... Uh, that's for two reasons. One is the reason I mentioned before about it running at 300 megahertz. Um, I'm sure there's a solution to that and I'll, I'll eventually find it. But the quick one is to just plug in that cable. And also it allows me to extend a desktop like this when I'm not using the DeckLink card. Um, I use the DeckLink card for DaVinci Resolve. And all I need to do is just change the input source here to HDMI and then I got the full screen display over here for what I'm doing yeah, because this which is really handy the other thing I did was after I got everything arranged I covered the holes in the back plate of that tray with tape and that's to try to block as much air from going into those places that are not filtered as I possibly can the way I fixed the power supply hanging down too low with the cord uh, too low was I just lifted it up and I glued in a couple of blocks to hold it up higher. And that's working just fine. I went out and I bought a new filter to put in there. And this one was fairly expensive. It's got a lot of pleats in there, so it should do a really good job of filtering the air. However, it wasn't quite one inch thick, like most of these filters aren't. So I had to cut shims and slide in there to uh, push it up tight against the bottom of the case to seal it off better. And as you can see here, how nice and clean it is. Just quickly going through the pictures that I have here that I took while finishing it up and I don't see anything else. There's one thing that I need to go back and work on and that's the mounting for the two exhaust fans in the back having them rigidly attached to the case is too loud. I don't know if you can hear it. I'll stop talking for a second so you can maybe hear it. 
it's a sound that I could get used to, but I'd really rather not. I mean, if there's a way that I can make that quieter by mounting those probably on springs, I'll, I'll look at that and see how it works. Before I end this, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that's the general airflow of this case. It has two fans in the back that push the air out of the case, and it's pulling the air up through that filter in the bottom. And that's a very efficient way to ventilate the case. And you can't compare it to a standard PC case with two of the same size fans in there. They will not work the same way. What they'll do is they'll grab air from any location that it can pull it from inside a standard PC case because there are tons of leaks, tons of openings all over the place. And it'll, you know, draw it from the strongest source, basically. So you have a pathway, you could say, of air moving through the PC case. And that's not the case here because the bottom is wide open and provides a large filter surface. It's pulling air evenly, and there's no obstructions down there. It's pulling air evenly up through that filter and pushing it out through the case. So air can circulate better within the case and pull the heat away as it's happening. Since I've gotten this buttoned up, I've been monitoring the temperature of my big graphics cards and they've been running at an even 10 degrees Celsius cooler than they were before. So I have absolutely no worries. I've even run it under load by rendering out a video to see how it performs and it was still way cooler than it was before. So absolutely no concerns about heat.